Right guys, in today's video, as the thumbnail suggests, I'll be testing dynamic boost on versus off. And actually, my findings were pretty strange. But just before I show you my results, let me just show you where you would find this. It's in the video control panel. And guys, don't panic. If you don't have it, it just means that you've got a slightly older GPU. I've got a GTX 1650, which is not great in the first place, but it is the GDDR6 version. So I do have dynamic boost and it's also up to your manufacturer whether or not they enable dynamic boost. So if you got this option in the video control panel, it might be worth your while just to see what your performance is with it on and off. So just to read out here, dynamic boost maximizes system performance by dynamically shifting power between the GPU and CPU. So my thinking was that dynamic boost it's always, uh, if, if you do have this option in the NVIDIA control panel, by default, it is gonna be on. But my thinking was, I'm getting better performance with dy dynamic boost. So I haven't tested it in quite some time. But guys, just bear in mind, I've got a, a GTX 1650 laptop, so it's not the stronger, or it's actually quite a weak GPU, as well as an i5 10 200 h CPU. So my CPU is pretty weak. It's a, it's a quad core, High performance in brackets, inverted commas, CPU, but I mean quite core CPUs get caught with a pants down in 2023, let's just be honest. So my thinking was by having that enabled, I was going to get better performance. However, my results say otherwise. But before you get to those results, guys, please head on over to my, um, my YouTube homepage. If you are subscribed to the channel, please just ensure that the notification bell is selected over here. It really will help me with the algorithm. And for those of you that aren't subscribed, if you enjoyed this video and at the end feel like subscribing, when you do so, please just select that notification icon. It really will help. Um, and yet again, guys, I went over 2,000 subscribers a couple of days back. I just want to say thank you so much for the support and I'll try and make the videos better with each iteration. But let's get to those results. So, uh, here we go. Um, obviously I don't use Notepad anymore and somebody did request that I put my results side by side. So in my test, I tested dynamic boost in the NVIDIA control panel on versus off. I used the latest driver 537.13 so this is just uh, my stock standard in video control panel settings. Uh, so by default, dynamic boost is on. And the only thing I changed uh, once I finished this benchmark is I switched dynamic boost off and I restarted my computer twice, or my laptop twice. And then just before we get to those results, as you can see, all these games are single player. Um, my results definitely will differ from yours if you're on an RTX platform, because I think the stronger your CPU and the stronger your GPU, the better dynamic boost will be. However, for me, I've got a very weak CPU. So by taking some power or, or, or wattage away from the CPU, I think that's kind of why I was getting less performance with dynamic boost on. And then all my games are tested at medium settings with the exception of the newer games. Returnal is at low. Uh, set to quality uh, Ratchet and Clank is a mixture of uh, low and lowest set to quality Remnant 2 is set to quality on low Dead Space Remake is set to low on quality FSR 2 Hogwarts Legacy is on medium and Resident Evil 4 is on a mixture of medium high and low everything else is at medium with FSR set to quality and then as mentioned earlier I did test on the latest NVIDIA driver 537.13 so guys in this column over here or in this benchmark set over here i dynamic boost on and when i add up all my average fps's my total fps over 15 games it comes to 1028 and then for the same thing for the one percent lows i add up all the one percent lows and my total one percent lows over 15 games was 722 and i actually thought this test was going to go the other way but as mentioned, because I do have a weak CPU, I think Dynamic Boost is actually stealing some of my CPU performance. And because I have a GTX 1650 laptop, um, there's a, a ceiling where your graphics card can't perform anymore. 
So I think when you take some wattage away from your CPU to put onto your GPU, but your GPU is already at its ceiling, you're actually stealing a little bit of performance with dynamic boost. Yet again, guys, please, please, please. Uh, if you're on an RTX system, I don't recommend taking off dynamic boost because typically if you've got an RTX 3050 or 3060, it's paired with the 11th, 11th generation CPU. So your CPU is stacked, your GPU is stacked, and dynamic boost really will help. But for people like me that do use a GTX card with a quad core CPU, I recommend just trying out switching off dynamic boost in the NVIDIA control panel. Because as you can see over here, when over the 15 games, when I add up all my average FPSs, my total average FPS comes to 1034. So uh, a little bit of a boost in average FPS. And then when I do the same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows, and my 1% lows come to 729. So you can see over the 15 games, I'm actually getting seven FPS higher in terms of 1% lows. So it's a bit of a boost, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think dynamic boost is gonna give you a boost. Yet again, if you're on an RTX card and, and, and an 11 gen CPU, leave dynamic boost on. Your system is well equipped to, to dynamically shift between GPU and CPU. But if you do use a, a GTX 1650 graphics card in your laptop and you've got a quad core CPU, I think it's worthwhile just switching off dynamic boost and seeing if you actually gain a little bit of performance. Because my thinking is, if you've got a weak CPU and you're actually dynamically boosting between your CPU and your GPU, your GPU is already maxed out and you're actually just losing CPU performance. So guys, I'm not an a, a IT expert. I'm just a guy that really likes to test out different settings on a computer. So please take my, my results with a pinch of salt. I just like testing things out and seeing what the nature and relationship are between things. So I recommend just give it a try. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, switch it back on. Anyways, that's my two cents. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. If you're still watching and you haven't subscribed as of yet, now's the time to do so. Guys, but the most important thing is, it's people like you that make a difference. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Cheers.